left and then eventually it will kick in over on YouTube. So I've hit start streaming over here on the desktop and it's telling me that we've gone live. So I'll tell you what, let's switch this over and uh, I'll come and join you at the workbench. So howdy, I'm Matt, welcome to this live session. We are gonna be unboxing the XUAV Snow Goose. Now, is it gonna be just snow? Nobody knows. This package literally turned up today uh, and um, I don't know if you can see the amount of um, give there is in this package. I think it's had a uh, less than ideal journey on the way to us. Now, you'll notice audio fine. Thank you for that, Eddie. I really do appreciate that. You'll see that there's some live chat going on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, we do have a top-down camera as well, so you can get in close and you can see what's going on with this model. Now, there is a little bit of housekeeping to do first before we stick the knife in here. We go and take a look. Uh, the first one is, I just need to make absolutely clear, this is the XUAV Snow Goose. It's not a model which you're likely to see frequently on the popular RC YouTube channels, uh, mainly because they're not given out as freebies. So this model was bought out of my own money for my own abuses. We will be discussing money, how much it cost, how long it took to get here and things like that uh, in a few minutes time. Uh, that will go one way or another, depending on how good or bad uh, we have the forecast for snow in this box in a few moments time. Also, just to follow up from the previous live episode with the Dart XL, uh, no apologies for this. I have not been out and flown it yet. I've been super busy with work, and as many of you already know here, uh, is that we never apologize for being busy with work because work pays for foam, and hey-ho from there. So with that, let's have a quick look. If it's out of focus, I've set it to not auto blur, so it will sort itself out eventually, by the way, on the camera. Uh, with that said, the X... Let's stop the chat and we'll get straight in there. Right, this model was on pre-sale. The video for this was on the 18th of September. I'm gonna need more than a knife to get in here. If you get a pair of scissors. Uh, on the 18th of September, we did the video where we discussed that the XUAV were doing a snow goose for $99. Now, they did actually give two shipping options. One was $51, which I went for, or another shipping option for $39. Now, that was on the 18th of September, and we are now well into December. Uh, I don't know the exact, oh, I can tell you it's the 19th of December. So those of you watching this back later, uh, is that that's three months and two days later. So it's taken three months and two days to get here. Now, to be fair to XUAV, they did say that the, the model was going to start shipping in October. And then there was a slight delay with to do with the plastic molding pieces, which in the beginning, XUAV were very good at keeping people updated, especially over in the Facebook group. However, they went deathly quiet for at least a month, and I know quite a few people were getting itchy feet, including myself, to wondering, was this really gonna turn up? Uh, so thankfully, well, this better be the, the snow goose. Uh, thankfully, it has been and turned up, and yes, it is a snow goose. I, like I said, I've literally not opened this up. Uh, it's just turned up today, uh, and I've gone, right, uh, I had a quick chit chat in the Facebook group, and uh, this is it, but it doesn't, it did not feel good in that bag to say the least. Um, one thing to note is that it was on the 9th of January in 2017. I shot Vivian an email for over at XUAV uh, making some suggestions around their packaging to the XUAV clouds. Now, the XUV, XUAV clouds is very similar to this model, as in that they've both got a 1.8 meter wingspan and a VTEL at the back. Now, the packaging on the XUAV clouds was absolutely awful. And just having a quick look at this, I can tell you this is in the same kind of crapness uh, as far as packaging goes. And it's such a shame because the XUAV Mini Tal, I know many of you out there, they're just, they're just an amazing model, super cheap, flies so well, so, so well. I think I've got three of them here kicking around, maybe four of those models kicking around there, which they're not going anywhere um, because they're, they're, they're just such great models. And I've, I've got some other projects which I need to reconsider for 2019. But uh, yeah, the packaging on the Mini Talon, absolutely brilliant. You, <laughs> The only issues I've had with a mini talent is that XUOV forgot to put the fins in the box. 
work that one out. Uh, and yeah, the packaging's really, really good. But on these bigger models, it has been somewhat poor, as you can tell by this state going on here. Now, obviously this is a little bit variable, uh, depending upon the courier, but let's face it, if you're based in China and you think, well, we're sending models all around the globe, especially if we're gonna send it direct like they did, uh, is that you would beef up the shipping, uh, beef up the packaging on the item itself. And there's no point sticking a little sticker on there saying, what does it say on there? Uh, fragile handle with care, that was written on the inside of the package and uh, that's going to come out really well on the microphone no apologies you can see the size of it and uh, as many of you already know this is being recorded live so we leave all screw ups in to say the least yeah that box is definitely seen better days to say the least i don't even know how we get in here sensibly going to use the knife to get in there. Now if you have any questions about this model as we go through, please do ask them in the uh, live chat on the right hand side of your screen. Uh, quick note, those of you which are using an iPad or a mobile phone device, uh, is that down in the bottom right hand corner is a button which you've got to press to actually see the chat because otherwise uh, uh, YouTube hides it from you. Uh, and of course if you've got any questions or comments after we've, this live stream has been over and done with, don't forget there will be a link to the Facebook group. Oh, just go onto Facebooks and type in Rag the Nuts Off. Uh, and there's a, a community of almost 3,000 cool RC pilots like myself uh, and yourself uh, over there in the Facebook group. Uh, and uh, it's quite lively to say the least. As you can see, I'm doing my best to try and give you a good view as we go in. And I will go and have a look at your chat in just a moment. We need to get in this box first. I'm doing my best to get in a, in a timely fashion. Right, come on, aha. Oh, it's not a snow goose, it's a mini goose. <laughs> Sorry, it's just nuts. Let me pause for a moment, A, to go and have a sip of coffee, uh, and B, so that I can just check up and make sure I've missed out on uh, any of your chat. Uh, Eddie says, how's the cute doggy Luna? She is doing great, but she's not out here in the office this evening. I've given it to the kids to go and terrorize them. Uh, let's have a quick look. Uh, Kev, welcome aboard for the live show. Uh, let's have a look. Mini Goose, how big is the rule? Again, this is the thing. Many of you know about the Mini Talon. The Mini Talon is not small by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, and they've called this the Mini Goose, but I thought we were having the Snow Goose. Anyway, we'll have a look at the parts in the moment. Like you said, you've seen me open this up. Uh, we've got some spars in here. We'll have a look at these other bits and bobs. They've included lots of stickers, which is actually a nice thing because you think about that. Uh, that is a whole separate task, which is not, not probably done in-house. That has to get outsourced and get done somewhere out, outside as well. Uh, let's have a quick look. Uh, it's all about the karma. When are you going to get to fly? Uh, wanting to see the Dart uh, XL fly. Yes, me as well, but just be aware the weather here in the UK is absolutely rubbish at the moment and B, I'm ultra busy with work. Uh, I think I've done, in the past week, I have done at least 140 hours and that's working hours. That include breaks and taking the dog out for a walk on and stuff like that. Uh, easily 140 hours, probably a little bit more. Uh, so it's really, really full on my work at the moment. As soon as I get some downtime, I need to get that Dart XL laminated uh, and then we'll take it out for a punt. Um, but again, just be aware, the weather's here. It's just terrible here in the UK at the moment, so I don't feel that bad about it. Uh, we're just being busy with work. Uh, we do get an instruction manual, whatevs. Uh, let's go and take a look at the model itself because I am a little bit concerned to see if it actually stays in one piece or not. Uh, and you'll find out as I do as we go through. So there is a distinct lack of packaging with inside the box itself, which is a little bit disappointing to see. Um, if we think about other companies for a moment, let's pick up uh, Hobby King, for example. Let's be fair, Hobby King are normally pretty damn good at the packaging of their products. In some cases, you could say they package their products too well. Uh, even not very good models like the Bonanza, for example. Very well packed. You're not damaging that one when it turns up to you. Uh, but the second you throw it, well, whole different story. Anyway, let's get in here. Yeah, so packaging's definitely a bit lapsed, to say the least. Uh, and again, we could let XUAV off if it had been their first rodeo, their first time at building and shipping a big box, uh, or models, uh, parts of a big model in and abroad, but it's not. 
they've done this several times before, uh, to say the least. So they perfectly knew what they were doing. Uh, and um, yeah, packaging is not great. So uh, if something in here is not damaged, I will be absolutely amazed. But uh, let's hold our final judgment on that. Now, you may be wondering uh, what kind of designer this model is. It's uh, a VTEL. Uh, and my experience so far, especially with like the XUAV clouds, which I'm very fond of to say the least, uh, is that they do fly like just great big puppies in the sky. They are very, very well mannered. Uh, and again, I'm talking about the XUVA cl clouds here. We'll talk. I, we've got to hold our final judgment on the uh, mini goose as it's been turned up until we actually get out and fly. And remember that we've had models here like the XUAV clouds, which it was probably about 12 hours build time because I laminated it uh, and there was other bits and bobs we were working out at the same time. It did took absolutely ages to get that onto the flight line uh, and it was an absolute nightmare to get built because I wanted to laminate and it wasn't the easiest one and I wasn't very good at laminating them at the time either. Uh, and it was a right old struggle to get it over the line. Actually, but then the second we got it into the sky and we got these issues roll sorted out with it, which were not model related, it was to do a setup in the vector. Uh, is that it flew absolutely brilliantly well. Um, anyway, getting to the, the mini goose, we do have a little bit of a mold, which just, that surface just needs a bit of a attention. Um, we're a bit wayward on the older surfaces themselves. I would personally, I would not be happy uh, using that uh, elevator because it, remember it's a VTEL, so it will sit the bits to fall out of it again a little bit of cello tape in here wouldn't have, to hold it all in wouldn't have gone amiss in production uh, anyway get back to my point uh, the actual VTAL itself is nice to see they've got a nice spar in there to hold it together uh, that's the tail will be a VTAL at the back like so uh, the actual surfaces themselves I'm not that impressed with uh, because I've, again Dare I say it, if we think about Hobby King for a few moments, is that what they've done, they'll tend to do, is run a little piece of glue down the back uh, and it will hold the surfaces uh, in one place. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a little bit of tape on there. Uh, we still might lose the spar at the bottom, but I'll go and put it over on one side. Again, remember, this model was bought out of my own money for my own abuses, so uh, obviously I don't want to go and lose any parts because I, if it's good, it's going to stay. So let's go and get those surfaces out of the way. Oh, one very curious thing. Uh, by the way, if I put that up on the top camera, as you'll be able to see, you'll be able to see all the cracking down there in the hinge. So that's why I'm saying it. I'll definitely want to put some sellotape, sorry, not sellotape, some uh, tape, either laminate along that seam or some blendum tape just to reinforce that seam because it's such a critical surface. Uh, one nice thing to note, which I was going to mention, is the foam is really quite nice. It's, it's not EPP, it's EPO but we've had models from EPO foam for absolutely ages and it's really, really light, it's pretty strong. If it, the damage is not too bad, too bad it's quite repairable. Uh, and the point which I was trying to make is look at the size of that control horn which is gonna go on there. So if I just put my thumb next to that, you'll see that, that the control surface is absolutely humongous. One of the bugbears about the Mini Talon, in fact, probably one of the only bad things you can say about an XUAV Mini Talon is that the provided control horns are absolutely rubbish and it should be the first thing, as soon as you open that box, you should just throw them away and stick them in the bin. Now, let me go and pop those over there uh, so we can get some of these parts out and we can take a, a closer look. Now, again, I'm a little bit wary. I do want to keep an eye on time and I also want to make sure that I'm missing out any questions which you've got as well. Uh, let's have a quick look on there. Is the goose cut? Not yet by the looks of it, but we're getting here. Uh, ah, we're looking at the red plastic bits now. Now, that's a curiosity because apparently those are the parts which cause the delay in the production. Holy moly's! Look at the size of that! Keeping it family friendly, Matt. You can only just imagine what Matty might have come out with then. I'm, that's humongous. Where's the other bits? Right, uh, why, why am I going off on a slight tangent? Uh, because I'm actually amazed by the sheer size of that control horn. That's one of the biggest control horns I've ever seen. Let's go and get one of those surfaces back. So look at the size of that in the palm of my hand. That's gotta be about an inch and a half wide by over an inch and a quarter tall, to say the least. That's a control surface. 
which once it goes in there, look at that. That is massive. Wow. <laughs> uh, thumbs up. <laughs> I, I, I've genuinely not seen such an over engineered control horn before. No complaints from the Mac camp on that one. Uh, that is one that is one of the best control horns layouts which I've seen ever, except for, what was it, the FMS Edge 540. Those had really, really good control horns on. Absolutely very impressed by that, to say the least. Uh, we'll take a look at the, that box in a minute, and because I'm more interested in the main part of the model to see how bad, bad or good it might be. So let's work our way around in here. Um, again, I'm just trying to go careful with it. Again, would have been nice to see some more packaging material going on in here uh, to, to help it cope with its journey uh, across the sea and through the air and whatnot in the back of Mr. Parcel Force's van, which let's be honest, if you were Mr. Parcel Force, you probably lobbed that in the back of the van. And don't say, and if you work for Parcel Force and tell me that you don't lob stuff in the back of the van, uh, I used to work for Parcel Force and know full well what goes on. Um, so. Yeah, those videos you see. <laughs> Nuts. And uh, not that far away from the truth in some instances. Uh, let's have a quick look. So, yes, we, you seen me unpack the box, which was in a sealed bag. And unfortunately, the nose on the front of my snow goose, or mini goose, uh, is definitely broken, as you can see up there on the uh, top of the uh, thing. That is purely down. It's definitely recoverable. In fact, there's a whole piece bloody missing. That's how bad the impact was. There is a whole piece missing, which has been broken out from the nose on there. Now, is it recoverable? Absolutely. Uh, a little bit of glue will recover that, but it really just does highlight, and it was pretty obvious the second when this box turned up, is that the packaging was not adequate, uh, and we do have quite a hefty bump to the point that I've got a, an additional piece of snow uh, to go with the snow goose. That is not, I'm gonna say it's not acceptable considering all those things which I mentioned earlier. This is not their first rodeo, XUAV's first rodeo, uh, at getting a model of this size uh, out and shipped. And that was one of the major pieces of feedback when it came to the, uh, oh, even the towels bent as well. Yeah, look. That obviously that's not supposed to be like that. And if I put that up on the top camera, I'll tell you one thing, one quick observation, this is not as big as the XUAV clouds. Um, the, the wing depth is not the same, that's for sure. Uh, anyway, uh, my tail is broken. Now a little bit of warm water should coax that back round, but again, goes to highlight packaging was less than ideal. I do like, okay, so I am being trying to be fair here. Uh, is that I do like and I really do appreciate the fact that, and we had this exactly the same structure on the XUAV clouds, is that they have not been and glued in uh, these wing parts. And the same with the wing struts down in the tail as well. I know some of you, it would make it faster for you to get the model built and things like that. But it's little touches like this which make the actual install of the wiring looms into your model an awful lot easier. So for me, it's definitely a thumbs up. And the reason why it's thumbs up is just because some of you may want to put the, well, I know that I am going to be putting the FPV gear right out on one wing, the receiver right out on the other one, uh, and do a maximum separation between all the actual parts itself. Uh, and by those parts not being glued in, it makes it absolutely child friendly to be able to, to run the cabling out and create custom looms and run it out around on the desk. Um, but anyway, let's move on. We do have a parachute bay at the back. One noticeable thing which is missing from this model, and we're looking at the bottom right now, uh, is that we are missing the downward facing camera. They're on the bottom of the XUV clouds, and I'm pointing down there because I can see it down there on the, uh, against the wall is that in the bottom of there, there was a great big hole because that was designed as being a survey model. This one's definitely more in, uh, targeted towards the uh, FPV or more serious modeler, if that makes sense. 
So again, I'm just going to take a few little bits of cello tape, just all these bits in, into uh, where they should be. Again, I don't want them falling out as we go through. And I might just take that fuselage on there as well. Again, am I going to moan about it? No, it's just what it is. Yeah, but it's a little disappointing, but no big surprise. We've got a dented tail uh, and uh, yeah, we, well, that tape works out well, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, no big surprise that we've got a dented tail uh, and a dented nose on this model, uh, just from the packaging which we've been received. So, or lack of packaging, should we say. Uh, and I'm just uh, trying to get that to stick on there so I can get this. Not very well. There's nothing quite like doing stuff live there, is there? Because it never works out the way it should do. It's on the floor now. Anyway, there you go. That gives you an idea on the size. It's actually a lot, it's a lot more compact. One of the issues with the XUAV clouds was that just the sheer size of it, it's one of, with the clouds, the only bad thing which I can say about that model was that it took, t you needed two hands to launch it. So you've got two great big props, 11 by sevens up on the front. You need someone else on the sticks or somebody else launching it for you because the model's so bloody big and just big and bulky. And you can't, you have to literally balance it on one hand and you're actually launching it with your, with your right hand and pushing it out. Uh, no issues getting off because two great big low KV motors with huge props on them. Uh, really, it just goes off. Like I said, big puppy once it's in the sky. Second, you, it's, it's got a bit of momentum. It's away. Uh, never had uh, any indications of an issue with a launch uh, with the model itself. Um, but yeah, it is definitely a two-hander to get it going, especially if you've got quite a lot of battery which you've been packed into it. Uh, coming back to my point, which is with the mini, oh, that's actually going to be handy that we've got a lid which fits in there so I can actually get that nose area back round straight. And obviously, I'll do that off camera uh, once we, uh, once the live episode's over with. But that'll give you an idea on it. Very, very streamlined. Again, not that, unfortunately, she doesn't have the prettiest nose at the moment, but you're going to have to take it from me. I got it here in the flesh. And this thing looks like it's going to be much, much easier to launch. Could have done with a few finger grips underneath, let's be fair. Underneath here, a finger grip or two. And again, the bottom piece is all bent as well, which doesn't help. Again, crap packaging. I think I've made my point on that. Terrible packaging. Uh, but it does, even with this, imagine it's loaded up. You've got a couple of 5200 packs in there, maybe bigger, maybe a lion pack in there. It's not going to be that hard to launch this thing in the sky. I don't think that's the launch in this one's going to be an issue at all. Um, because it, while it may have a 1.8 meter wingspan, uh, it's going to be, it's got a smaller fuselage, aka I can get my hand around the bottom of it. So I put it underneath. I can actually get my hand around it. I don't have particularly big hands either. Um, so I'm quite impressed by that. I reckon launching this is actually going to be, yeah, there's me throwing it like that, but it would just be off it goes because it's a twin motor uh, on the front. So loads of, it'll have loads of thrust. Uh, and probably, I'm guessing, again, I'm not entirely sure what setup I'm going to go with this one. My target will be around about a nine amp cruise, maybe 10 amps. Uh, for a decent speed as well. And uh, the more I'm looking at this, uh, it really does, even with its bent nose, it does look extremely streamlined. So it, it's going to be very curious to see what its cruise speed is compared to, say, a Mini Talon, for example, uh, because I know with the XUAV clouds, which is, which is a bigger model, like a bigger wingspan compared to this and a bigger fuselage, uh, that one does... Well, it... <laughs> It copes right with the wind, doesn't really get affected by it, but it does slow down when you go into it quite noticeably when you go into a headwind, headwind. So it'll be very curious to see what this one does as well. So yeah, let me know what you think about it so far. I'm just gonna put this down on the ground because we need to have a look at the wings as well and see what else we've got. Well, the good is we've been and got in the box. All right, and uh, let's get myself signed back in uh, so I can see your comments have been, which have been coming in live as well. Uh, that's what she said, says Killer Dave. Howdy Dave as well. Let's have a quick look. Uh, Kev says, you can do the landed without parser force help. That's absolutely true. Uh, as pissed as the tail. Well done, Jane. Uh, Floyd says, I would pay an extra $10 for an outer box. I, I, yeah, if you look at the box itself, it's only a twin skinned wall box. You've got one skin on the outside and one skin on the, the other side, and it's just too flexible. You need the, that's like what, that's what I was trying, my point was being, the XUAV Mini Talon 
That box is a triple skin box. So you have a middle layer, you have the corrugated on both sides, and then an outer layer as well. Really, really good box structure. This one is the same issue as what we have with the XUV Clouds. It's not very good. Yeah, like I said, trying to keep it family friendly uh, for it. Let's have a quick look. <laughs> uh, David says, never, you heard it first, Matt needs a two-hander. Thank you, David, as well. Let's have a quick look. Uh, uh, Smooth virus, 9 amp cruise on 3S. No, that'd be 4S. Uh, the, yeah, definitely 4S for this. Uh, it's only the smaller models now, which I run on 3S. Uh, mainly because 4 I know we're going slightly off topic, but with 4S, you, you're basically getting 33% extra power. Now, that obviously that can mean two things to you. You may be thinking raw power, well, and that is nice that they've been and done that. Brilliant, I'll mention that in a moment. Now, coming back to my point, with 4S is that you get basically, you've got an extra cell in there, which is an actual third power available to you. So that's an extra voltage and extra current, and generally more speaking, current capacity uh, as well. Um, but the point being is that you can either use that for speed or you can use it for endurance. And that's the thing with the higher, the higher you go up with the voltage is that the less current you need uh, for the same power, if that makes sense, because uh, it's uh, uh, power is voltage times current, and of course, if you're increasing the voltage, you decrease the current when you go through. So, yeah, it's a curious one. Um, that's sorry, talking of curious. Uh, so, yeah, generally, where possible, try try and use 4S model depending. Uh, one very curiosity, a uh, big curiosity, is that the surface is not as big. Uh, and these wings are definitely, I, I, I like, really, me likey that sweet on that wingtip. In fact, let's go just pause for a moment to look at this on the top camera. Can you see the angle on that? Uh, and you're just gonna have to take my word for it. And it's just one of, it looks really nice. It is gonna be a bar steward to laminate. Uh, it, no, it didn't. No, it's going to be fine to laminate, to be honest. Uh, it's, just, it's just a really nice swoosh. In fact, if you wanted a swooshy wingtip, that's the swooshy wingtip you would want. It looks damn good. Again, not a massive, great big uh, control horn surface in there. Definitely big thumbs up there. And super nice. That was my bugbear with the XUAV clouds, is that they had glued in the main spar into the wing section itself, which made it an absolute pain in the ass. Uh, so with this one, to see that they have not been glued this in is really, really good to see, because if you think about it, that now enables you to get your servo wires down the side easily, because you will need extensions and probably a connection joiner here in the middle here somewhere as well, is that you can then just carry that on. Have they done that in the molding? No, they haven't. They've stopped the, the trench there. But what, I, what I'll what i personally end up then doing is then carrying that trench on all the way up through there and then go on and then we'll get the, that's the right wing. So we'll have the receiver out on that wing, on the on the right wing itself. We'll have the video transmitter on the left one. Uh, and yeah, we'll have that on the top and the same for the one other side as well. So yeah, nice touch. I know it's really, really small. And I know for some of you, you'll think it's a pain in the ass, but actually the more serious guys out there uh, you'll go, yeah, that's actually, they've not done a task in this and that's actually for the better because then that gives us all maximum options when it comes to the flexibility of the actual final setup of the model itself. You actually get a proper full choice over um, how you're gonna set it up. So it's a decent size to say the least. Uh, going back to cost now, this model was available for pre-order for $99 plus shipping which was the bit which they missed out. There were two options in there, one for $39 and one for uh, $51. So all in all, I paid $150 for this model, which is uh, just only a little bit less than what I paid for the XUAV uh, clouds, which was down there. But actually, I did use a discount code on the clouds so I think I got it for about $150. Uh, and then we, there were some issues to do with quality control back then. And I did, I think all in all, Banggood sent me a massive refund against it because he had a bloody, bloody great big, oh, she just, yeah, nice. They are really nice. I have no idea what those plastic strips were for, to be frankly honest. Uh, but what I do like 
is look at the quality on that. Those are rolled carbon tubes and those must be, yeah, those must be, those, I, again, I'll need to look at the manual and stuff for it, um, but that looks like the main spar and then these two go out in the wings somehow. Uh, I, I, again, I'll, yeah, that is nice. That is really, really nice. And it's rolled carbon. Sorry, there's me going looking at it and going, mm, with an R and all over it. Uh, I hope that comes out on the top camera for you. Uh, but you'll have to take my word for it. That looks like, and it, it, 99.9% .9 sure, that is rolled carbon fiber uh, in there. Really nice quality, expensive part uh, to see uh, in there. Anyway, let's go and get this down and see what else we've got in the box, if anything. And then we can get this desk cleared off. No, that's it for the box. Uh, so we'll give the box minus one. And some of it goes flying by. Let's go and get this up out of the way and we'll see if we can get this model roughly made up on the desk. I'll tell you one thing for sure, it's got a nice payload capacity in it and it's not too big. That was probably the major, major complaint about the uh, clothes, uh, is that perhaps it was a bit too big. Um, I know for many of you, you'll be thinking about battery and again, which was the other reason for getting the camera uh, up above my head, so I'm just over there just checking on the screen, uh, is that I know for many of you, you'll be wondering what kind of battery load can be put in here. So with that said, I did have a ruler. Uh, not anymore, Matt says. Have I got a tape measure down here? No, I do have a calipers, but I don't think they're big enough. So what's that, 15, so we'll have to bear with me. So that's 15, and that goes, well, 15 centimeters to there and then we'll go to that corner so we've got a battery bay which is about 20 centimeters long uh, by approximately nine centimeters wide uh, and then as far as depth goes we'll just plop that in there yeah about that deep add a bit more uh, we'll say about seven centimeters deep so those of you which have got the 1600 uh, uh multi-star battery packs you'll definitely be able to fit at least one of those in there now that's the multi-star 5200 forest pack uh, that's going to go in there with loads of extra room now one thing to keep in the back of your mind and i hope this is coming out on the top camera for you is that while i've only got a single 5200 forest in there and it could be a much bigger pack which we've got up here in the nose keep in the back of your mind is that you do have this bay which is down at the back as well uh, and that bay is perfect for uh, your flight controller and if you didn't think that was enough room then you could also use that bay as well <laughs> in fact uh, on the um XUAV clouds which I've got down there what they've got in on that one is that this whole section here in the middle is actually one piece itself uh, and it's a one big area and then you've got I've got the um, Eagle Tree Vector which is sat back here uh, and one thing which would have been nice to see is a wooden or plastic of some form of inlay down here on the bottom so we know we've got super uh, firm or great base for uh, any flight controller to be sat in there. It does feel like that that bottom surface is flat and the reason why it would be flat is to put a flight controller in there. Now those of you who may be a little bit worried about oh Matt does it matter if the flight controller is maybe behind the CG line or behind the wing spar or in front of the wing spar or off on one angle. To be honest it doesn't really make much of a difference because if you think about the main wing spar is here being back that far, it's not that far away. Obviously, if you're putting it in the tail or out on a wing, it's gonna cause some issues, but you're still really, really close to the center of gravity. It's not gonna be that much of an issue. And again, I'm thinking about the XUAV clouds, which is down there. That one's always had the vector in the back of the model, never had an issue with stability uh, at all with the model in the sky. So yeah, plenty of options in here. Uh, you could stack those in there. You would definitely get three 5200 forest packs in there side by side. Again, we're dealing with a 1.8 meter wingspan model. That is a, the wing loading potential is right up there. And again, instead of me just mentioning these, let me go and get some. Uh, oh yeah, one minor bit of feedback. And again, it was a pet hate about the XUAV clouds. Uh, it would be nice to have seen some finger pulls. Now we may have those plastic parts to go on top of here, which we can glue on and stuff. 
Uh, well, for, I'll have a look on the plastic parts in a moment. But what I ended up doing with the clouds was that I've got pieces of sellotape up both sides and they use sellotape pull tabs uh, to take the lid off. Uh, also on the clouds is that we did have actual thumb screws to hold the uh, top section in. So as far as the fixing for this, don't know what, they, that what they've done with that. We'll have a look at the plastic parts in a moment. Now, the reason why I'm just going off screen a moment is because I'm going to grab an 18650 battery uh, and I want to grab a ooh, 26650 battery as well. And I just remembered, I've got this little pack sat down here on my desk, so that will give you an idea. So uh, those are 18650 batteries, the green ones. We'll open that up a second you are gonna be able to fit many in the nose. Now whether, that's of course, whether we hit CG or not is a whole different ballpark, uh, but you are gonna be able to fit many uh, 18650 batteries in that nose, that's for sure. Potentially, uh, depending upon the pack size and what you've done, you could, if you've got two packs of equal sizes, you could potentially get a second pack in there and then balance that out that way. So yeah, there are options there when it comes to the actual pack, the battery layer, and again, just to put into perspective, there's a 26650 battery pack, battery in there, loads of room, and again, if you went for a vertical pack, you would definitely get one, at least three wide in there, uh, and those are the 5,000 mini outfield packs, which I covered uh, in a different video a short while ago. Anyway, we were trying to get the wings on it, weren't we? And we were gonna have a look at our plastic bits too. Brilliant. And if you're wondering why I'm getting redder and redder, that radiator which is on behind me is on full napper at the moment. As I'm stood here going, it's getting quite warm in here. Right. Let's get these wings on so we can get out like a comprehend how big this one is. And by the way, it's not going to fit on your screen. Uh, I know for sure that, remember it's 1.8 meter wingspan, which is massive to say the least. Right. Let's get that one in there. And I will get back to your questions in a moment. So if you've got any questions or comments about anything which you've been and seen uh, so far, please do just ask. Uh, again, give you a quick heads up, build time on this one. The actual build time, the longest part which will take for this model uh, will ironically not be the electronics. It won't be putting the glue in it and stuff like that. It will actually be the laminating. And the reason why I'm saying the laminating is because we are about to hit, well, the shortest day here in the, UK, in the UK is the 21st of December. So uh, in two days time, it will be the shortest day of the year. After that, if things should start getting brighter. And personally, I'm really looking forward to seeing the half past three-ish sunrises uh, back in the summer when it finally comes back. Please come back, all is forgiven. Um, but my point being, yes, I will spend the extra time to laminate this model, A, because I bought it out of my own money and I want it to last. Uh, and B, we're in the middle of blooming winter. So that means muddy, moist, wet, frozen fields. And I quite like, like I said, I, I, I had a funny feeling I was gonna quite like it. And look at the blooming size of it. It is mahoosive, to say the least. That, I, I'm here having to hold these on. <laughs> it is absolutely massive. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I can tell you just, you know, when you check, like have a look at a model and you can kind of work out how it's going to fly. This thing is just going to be a big kitten in the sky. Uh, and it doesn't look like it's got any claws which want to bite your hand or any sharp teeth which want to bite his hands off. It's already had a bite out of it anyway. Uh, it does look like it is going to be a real nice, soft, gentle model which has uh, again twin motors which always the models with two motors on the front of them always sound really good in the sky very unique sound uh, very very nice to hear um, yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be nice in fact I probably I have to be honest I have forgot that it was coming and that's why I was so pleasantly surprised this morning when it turned up uh, is what well, yesterday even with the 30 quid bill which I had for import tax which was not very pleasant um, I'm now actually seeing it, I actually quite like it. Uh, and you can take one look at it, and again, just do sweeps out wingtips. You kind of know, just by looking at it, 
uh, it is going to fly really quite nicely. It's just going to be just a big soft puppy kitten, whatever you want to call it, uh, in the sky. And then, again, with the smaller fuselage launching it, it's going to be much nicer as well. Anyway, let's go and get those uh, parts, plastic parts over here so we can have a little nose. Genuinely impressed about those control horns. They were the biggest ones I've ever seen. In fact, those of you which have just been enjoying this in here live, look at the size of that for a control horn. Uh, and these things are just massive uh, and they fit in the top. I've not seen anything like this. They just, they're, they're absolutely massive. Uh, they sit in there on the top. I don't know how they fit underneath yet. There's probably small parts in there. We'll go have a look at in a moment. That's what we'll be having a look at. Uh, oh, give you a quick heads up. Corona servos all round. We'll be going in this one. Uh, no Tower Pro servos in this one. <laughs> uh, it'll be Corona servos in there. It does need a bit of a tidy up uh, around the actual surfaces themselves. Uh, and like I said, I will be laminating it. But yeah, look at the sides of that control horn. There are no complaints in this camp at all. Uh, about control surfaces uh, and because a it's of a decent size and that control horn on it is absolutely massive anyway let's go and get ourselves in here i'll tell you what while we're getting what's this bag in here let's get in here and have a look anyway while i'm having a look in there let's go and get this live chat open so i can see what you've been talking about here in the background because of course you can see what's been going on here in the background uh, and i haven't seen one iota of that let's have a quick look Odd looking ailerons. No, they're, they're pretty good. They're, they're of a decent size. Again, a model like this isn't built for aerobatics, so you don't need big surfaces. You just need surfaces which have enough authority uh, for you in the sky. Uh, looking at here for the control push rods. Uh, sorry, look. I don't. Again, this is the reason why I put the camera up above. Can you see the size of those uh, push rods? They are. 2.1, no, maybe even bigger. They are really meaty control uh, push rods on there. That's really, really good to see. There is a metal rod in here, which I have no idea what it's for. Again, I haven't read the instructions at all, so I'm just gonna pop that there at all. Put that back in the box. There is some um, screws, which have been included. Oh, nice, you've got decent quality. Let's have a look. Decent quality, the ball link uh, control horns. Uh, to which you then screw into the actual surfaces themselves. Really, really nice to see those in there. Again, a quality part which has been, which has been included. Uh, we've got some other bits and bobs which I've got no idea what they're for. We've got some tape. Uh, we've got some elastic material and I have no idea what that's for. Uh, again, like I said, I've not read the instructions. You've literally just seen me here open it up and just be curious about what kind of damage we've had with the model. Um, those of you, again, those of you who are just joining us, the box which it turned up in was not very good, poor, completely inadequate for the model. Again, comparing to uh, XUAV's other models, like the Mini Talon, which used a triple skin wall cardboard box, this one was only a sync double, and it really did show, that's why I've got a piece of foam on my hands, never good to see that. Uh, and then the tail and the nose have both had a knock as well, so. Yeah, other plastic parts, those will be the covers for the, again, you'll need an ESC on both sides, so they're mounted up underneath the wing. I'm sure some of you may have noticed when we had it up that way around, uh, and I've missed the iPad, apologies. Just been chatting as we've been going through. Um, so that was nice to see with the control horns and the clevises which are on there, and decent quality uh, push rods as well. Uh, so yeah, pretty good so far. Just unfortunate about the damage which we've got on the front there too on there so let's have a quick look i wonder which way around this is so that is ah ah oh right that suddenly made sense sorry it took a few moments for that to, to to get home the bit which we've not seen in a while is the actual vtel itself so i'm going to go and grab those two parts and we'll just quickly put these in he says quickly is that gonna work again i don't want to break it Stick that in there. You no, know, I'm gonna have to trim it to get it done. Again, what I tell you what, while I'm trimming it, let me get back onto the iPad uh, and look at your comments. So I'll go through there. Uh, let's have a quick uh, big horn. Yes, Richard, big horns to say the least. Uh, I'm just there, uh, just cleaning up the uh, surface so I can get these fins in. Uh, it's just a little bit of mold extra spillover, so it's no biggie. 
couple of seconds in here with a craft knife and we'll get that fixed and jobs are good and so let's go and get that in there uh, it is going to be a red and white model they, they, i don't think they do the plastic in any other color that's just the, the you get the choice of white and red or red and white that's just the way it is is that a bad thing i don't particularly think so as we all know red is the fastest color anyway so it's only going to improve its flight characteristics uh, and by the way if you're wondering what i'm cutting out is that there's just a bit of mold um spillover just down on here which is no big surprise because of the size of the part which we're dealing with um but two it's just no biggie at all and i'm using quite a <laughs> A well-used craft knife blade which has got other schmear all over it uh, and it's coming out re really really well so let's go and get this in here let's put one of those you just got to feather it in gently and then she goes in uh, now the bit which caught me out I didn't spot is that by the looks of it the tail is actually removable so if I is that gonna click yeah that will click in there it looks like this is, yeah, this has been designed for the, oh, look at that. That is good. Um, it, this has been designed for the tail to be removable so you can take these fins out. I know with the uh, clouds down there, in theory, you could unscrew them, uh, but for them to, to go to this level and then make them detachable, that's a nice touch. Again, I don't think there's enough of a friction fit. I really had to tug on that uh, for that to come on there and it does positively click in there the only negative which I can say is that it is now relying uh, upon the two teeth which are coming out the back of the tail of the model but unfortunately as we all saw earlier is that that part of the model was unfortunately received some uh, unwanted attention during the spat well during during the delivery so I can't really fit that on there I'll end up breaking it so uh, you'll have to take my word for it that's the t-tail uh, sorry, the V-tail which goes on the back. Uh, and yeah, it's a bit odd because it is separated there and it doesn't look like there's anything there to hold it together. I, like I said, I will read the instructions afterwards. Taking a look in there, we've got some other little black plastic, uh, little more little red plastic bits. Oh, that's a hinge for something or another that makes sense now what that uh, extra little bar was which we had uh, in the the little parts bit so that's a hinge for something i can't think what would be hinged right now maybe it's the uh, trap door on the back for the parachute it's about the right width i i, I don't know i'm just guessing at the moment uh, and what else we got on here let's have a quick look um it is a little bit odd that we have, unless they've included plastic bits, and I am struggling to see, work out how this is gonna work right now, because we've got two covers for the um, ESC bays. We've got another plastic piece in here. Um, we've got these control horns, but I don't see how these control horns are supposed to be, affixed to the model now what am i talking about is that as we saw these control horns do fit in and they go in through the surface like so but there's no there's obviously holes here unless they're just alignment holes and there is no screw fixing to the top um and you just put them to be honest glue would be fine i don't know even what i'm worried about uh yeah just scratch the surface up with a stand it up with a blade or something like that uh, and then I'll just put some Yoohoo pour in there and it'll be fine. So yeah, that's not even that's not even a, con a concern. So a quick look at these wing pieces. Uh, now these are one of the core cool parts actually when it comes to this model is because if I can lift this up, is that that sits on the end. Again, I'm being gently with the, going gently gently with this one, like so, because there's loads and loads of areas in here for us to get glue in. Again, that's as far as I'm going to push it with, because otherwise I'll be rushing it. Is that going to go on? Yeah, it's going to go on. So we've got a nice plastic mount here, which is fantastic. If you think about them, uh, you've got a big motor on here, which I'm very curious on how big a propeller you can fit on the front of it. So you're going to have to do it. You absolute maximum, like maximum, maximum, is a 15, uh, is a six inch. So yeah, the biggest propeller you're going to be able to fit on this model 
is a 12 inch propeller, but realistically, uh, you'll probably want an 11 or maybe even a 10 inch propeller on the front of here. But thinking about the motors which I've got, oh yeah, an 11 inch propeller, you've got plenty of clearance there between the model then, and plus it'll be out here as well, and the nose is going in as well. So yeah, an 11 inch prop gives you a lot of options when it comes to uh, the motor itself. You, you round about, I would say about 980, 900 kV, maybe even just a little tad lower, kind of dep really depends on the kind of efficiency and the kind of battery set setup which you're gonna be going for. Uh, but yeah, that 900 kV mark-ish, uh, anything in that kind of range with a decent size can size uh, on these would be uh, probably be a really good choice of that uh, uh, on the front of that 11 inch prop it's not going to be pulling many amps as well. Uh, one, also, one other thing just to, to raise there as a point is that I know for some of you, you may be worried about the, the size of propeller and torque roll and things like that. Uh, just to give you a heads up, my uh, XUAV Clouds, which is down there, has two motors and both of the propellers spin in the same direction. Shock horror. Uh, and I've never, ever had an issue with torque roll. In fact, any twin motor model I've had, I've never had an issue with torque roll. Ironically, it's been on the smaller models, and there's the suicide bunny up there where I've put an overpowered high, K, high KV motors on them, or, or like mid-range KV motors on them, uh, and you throw in them and they've got torque rock just because you can't get the airspeed up underneath them. Remember, this is a 1.8 meter wingspan model. There's plenty of wing to stabilize this model down. So yeah, 11 inch props, not an issue with this, uh, even if they are because I, why am I saying even? Even the big, is it the Hercules? All the props go in the same direction? Yeah, I think it's more a bit of an urban myth that you need counter-rotating props. Uh, it sounds logical having both propellers going the same way, sorry, opposite ways to each other, uh, would make the model fly straighter, but in reality, it really doesn't make a blind bit of difference at all. Uh, so anyway, uh, let me get back to your chat. Yeah, build time is going to be a curious on this one, just because of the amount which it uh, requires to be laminated. Uh, laminated, it's not a terribly like complex model to to, to build, uh, because it's going to need a bit of glue underneath. Again, you who pour is going to be the main glue of choice here, just because we've got very large surfaces up underneath the model itself. So, those of you which have joined a little bit later is that up underneath here you do have not only for the, the bottom half of the fuselage to be glued on, so you who pour would be a good choice here, but also you've got this section in here as well. And again, massive tip, make sure you stick the spar in there first. Definitely did, almost did that with the clouds when I put mine together. Uh, and the reason why I'm suggesting uh, uh, you who pour is because you do get a little bit of play time of it, um, although other glues which are not, uh, by the way, I won't, for sticking the base on, the bottom half, I will be using uh, Yuhu port and I'll be using it as a contact adhesive, okay? In other words, I'll glue it, I'll sand it off first, uh, make, and make, sure, make sure it all fits, then once I'm happy, I'll then sand the surfaces, put the glue on it, let it, leave it five, 10 minutes or so to dry off, and then I'll be pushing them in and using it, the Yuhu port, as a contact adhesive. However, for the sections underneath here where we've got vertical sections, we need the glue to be able to be slippy. So in that instance, what I'll be doing is of the base pieces are, so for example, I'll make sure the main spar is well glued in, using it as a contact adhesive. But the other sections which I'll be doing, because I need that slippy slidey uh, time, okay, I will be getting the, I'll get the missus to give me a hand. We'll get the glue in there as quickly as possible and we'll get the part in there, the bottom pieces underneath the wings. There's a piece like that. So you've got quite a bit of area which needs to get covered up, get glued up quite quickly. I'll be putting that in there straight away and not waiting for the glue to set. And again, another reason why I'm suggesting uh, you who pour for this is A, uh, E6000 or uh, Goop glue will probably attack the EPO foam. Uh, and hot glue, you just don't have enough play time. Whereas Yuhu Pour is, it's really, really cheap and it works really, really well. So yeah, that is gonna be my glue of choice for this model. Even though we all know that once it sees sunlight, it will go a little bit yellow and you will end up with PP stains. So make sure you mop up any leakage which you get there uh, when you're putting the model together. 
Anyway, let's go and get this thing back around that way up. And uh, yeah, besides the bump on the bottom and the bump chunk off the nose, do really kind of look at it. Let me see if I can get this up on here. So you get, at least you get an idea of at least one wing itself. And I, I know the bottom is not in properly and stuff like that, but at least you'll get an idea. That's half the model, okay? A model with a 1.8 meter wingspan with a decent sized battery in the nose and such a streamlined, not so streamlined on my version, uh, nose is gonna fly pretty damn well. It looks super efficient it probably really is going to be pretty efficient in the sky as well. So it's going to be a very curious one. As far as final verdicts, you've, you've seen its bad points so far today, haven't we? We've seen that the packaging is a bit crap. Um, and it's not... You are going to need to spend some time on it. I am going to have to glue it, get, it, get it built, uh, and then we're going to need to get it laminated. So it's going to add a... A couple of hours on top just to get this model to the flight line but as we always know we always hold off final judgment on models like this any model which comes here to the desk and we hold off final judgment until we get the model in the sky because we've had models here which have taken absolutely ages I've cussed them to the ends of the earth like the clouds which is down there on the floor because it took so long to get it to ready for flight worthiness and the second we've thrown it all all has been forgiven because it's just been one great big puppy in the sky. And inversely, we've had models here which have been super quick to build and have been utter rubbish, if not terrible, <coughs> bonanza, uh, and have been a complete waste of money. That's why we hold our final judgment uh, until we get these models uh, out on the flight line and get them flown as well. Right, so a quick look at your, uh, so a quick look. Uh, Flighty Law one says, as an airline pilot, I can only say the only issue with non-regard to non-counter rotating props is single engine thrust line operation. Um, uh, yeah, we, me and Austin were having a chat about this. There's, there's many, many aircraft who have multiple engines and all those propellers spin in exactly the same direction and there's no issues with them at all. Uh, Dave says uh, it's not necessary you have them both going the same way on the twin star uh, but it does make it sorry I have them both going the same way uh, but it does not make it super stable um, so have a quick look oh yeah um, and again he goes on to say about the uh, uh, it's a 1.8 mean 1.8 meter wingspan model let me just put this into perspective any extra torque roll if there is any noticeable it's just going to get quashed by the wing pushing it back down because you're only going to need a little bit of a shunt in the sky for this one to get going and then she's going to be off. Uh, so yeah, very, very curious. And again, very telltale, very nice looking V-tail to go on the top as well. Right, uh, let's have a quick look at your chat now. Uh, let me just scroll down up on there. Oh yeah, sorry, I've just seen Jazzy's comment there. Matt, can you remember the Maiden of the Clouds? I will never ever forget the Maiden of the Clouds. During the Maiden of the XUAV Clouds, the model which I'd spent 12 plus hours working on, we got it out and we threw it. Um, and all I can remember was Dave being, he was to the left of me uh, and uh, I remember Dave go, whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> it's next to me um, because uh, I pulled a great big loop off on the clouds. Uh, it was the scariest maiden I have ever had. And the best thing about that, it was all entirely my fault. And I'm very happy that I can be able to say that it was my fault because we knew what it was. We finally worked out what it was. We had the elevator setting for the stabilizer reverse. So the eagle tree vector for up was down and down was up so it would glide and because it was a very stable aircraft it wasn't obvious what the actual issue was <laughs> so as it was flying across it would slowly gain height and that's why and i'd let it go and just wanted to see what it did and then of course the feedback loop kicked in and then it did a bloody great big loop in the sky brown moment to say the least to think that what was that 100 and some dollars 
quid at least going in there. Uh, that was excluding the vector, the motors, the time, the effort and energy, and the laminate. <laughs> Put it on. <laughs> Scariest man. Never, ever forget that one, Jazzy. Uh, in fact, you can look it up on the YouTube channel um, underneath this video. Uh, by the way, I'm Matt. Welcome aboard, by the way. If you're new here, don't forget to press the subscribe button. Anyway, if you click on Rag the Nuts Off and then on the, the actual main YouTube page, type in XU AD Claims Maiden and you'll see the scariest Maiden I have ever done. And I've launched and flown an awful lot of models and we've had a lot of things go wrong, but the clothes in my head sticks in is like the worst screw up and it was entirely my fault. Um, bad Maidens. No, no, it was even scarier than the crappy um, Bonanza, which is down there. That one just caught screen. It was just obvious that it wasn't a particularly great model. This one, it actually flew, but it just did stuff it wasn't meant to do. And at the time, it was very, very scary. So well remembered, by the way, Jazzy. I am now going to wrap up because we have been live here for an hour. Uh, let me just quickly reiterate. This model was bought out of my own money for my own abuses. Uh, you probably won't see it that frequently on other YouTube channels because they don't give them away as freebies. So well done, XUAV, from that point of view. Uh, we always hold off final judgment until we get the model out on the flight line. Uh, is even like using the Dart XL as an example, I'm sure it's going to fly great. Okay, but I cannot tell you that it does fly great because I've not been out and flown it yet. And remember, I like this one. I bought that one out of my own pocket as well. Um, time for us to wrap up. Initial thoughts, obviously. The monkey in the room is that I've got an extra bit of foam here from the nose, which is been broken off and I'm now going to have to repair and it's not only on the nose as well it's the bottom piece of the nose and we've had an impact in the tail as well and the reason why we've got damage on this model is blatantly obvious which was just down to poor packaging okay uh, it, we, it was very clear why it could have happened inside the box there was a few token bits of fluffy material which is completely useless it needs to be a triple skin box, just like the XUAV Mini Talon. Putting that to one side, we've got some really nice manufactured plastic parts in here. It's nice to see that they've been thought about detachable tail fins as well, because if you think packing this in your car and you've got a V-tail, they're not the easiest models to squeeze into the rear of a, uh, into the back of the car, to say the least. Even those of you who've got bigger SUVs like myself, it's still quite an awkward model to get in there. That said, actually, Carrying a bigger model like this to the flight line, again, I need to give you a heads up. That may actually be something which has maybe sent alarm bells off for, for some of you in the back of the head. Like, Matt, how am I going to carry a 1.8 meter wingspan model to the flight line? Well, I'll give you a heads up. What I do with the clouds is because the wings are laminated, these get stuck in the flight bag. So I use an IKEA bag. Those get stuck in there for a model or two or four. Uh, in the flight bag and then I carry this one and because I uh, carry the fuselage and because it's quite a big fuselage you're right to carry it one-handed and you can stack models on top of it as well so if you've got another model you can actually turn that model upside down on top of it and then maybe just carry it with both hands across to the flight line and we do trek quite far for one of the uh, for one of the flying sites as well um, so yeah you may be thinking 1.8 meter wingspan that's a bit too big for me Matt no in reality it's not that at all in fact it's just as easy carrying another model across the flight line and it looks like it, i say looks like the, the red plastic bits which we had in here are clips for the fuselage to clip the wings on so this looks like it's going to be easier to set up on the flight line than the x um, than the uh, xuav clouds because the wings clip on with the clouds i need to put screws through and then do them up and also up here on the nose uh, I, you also need to put uh, two Allen keys. We we'll have an Allen key with you to glue them on. I don't know what they've done for this top section yet. There's we got some straps and some bands and things like that, which I've really not investigated at all. I'm guessing you glue them on. I don't know until I read the instructions. But that said, I do like the streamlined look of the nose, even with its bent nose. Bit of a crooked nose at the moment, uh, and I. I the one thing for me, actually, I'm going to take away, I really like that sweeped wing. Uh, again, I hope you can see that up on the top camera. Uh, I re That's the one bit which has actually stood out for me uh, as being visually very attractive. And the biggest positive for the whole thing 
is the size of those control horns. And I'm going to leave you on that note. Look at the size of that one. Absolutely monstrous, to say the least. The biggest control horn and probably one of the best control horns which I've seen to date. And I've seen a lot of models, so I really do like that. So that's definitely thumbs up. Um, so with that said, it's time for me to go. I'm, all I can really say is a big thank you to you for taking the time to join me here live to say, take a look at the, they've called it, we know it's the snow goose, but they're called, now calling it the mini goose. Generally, packaging aside, definitely a foot down on that one. The rest of it, I kind of like it. Uh, it is going to take a while to get this one built. Again, remember what I was saying back at the very beginning of this video. I'm doing 120 to 140 hour weeks at the moment to do with work. I've got a lot on my plate. Um, RC modeling for me right now is on the back burner. It's just the way it is. Remember, work pays for foam. So it about I'm turning up today, 30 quid import tax. Didn't even like phase me because I know that I'm working really, really hard over there. So keep that in the back of your mind. Remember, we work hard so we can buy foam and we can have fun on a Friday or on a weekend uh, and just not care, okay? That's a big thing for me uh, when it comes to uh, the hobby in general. Sometimes, as many of you know, I'm absolutely full on uh, and then other times I'm completely full off because I need my attention somewhere else. And that's just the way it is at the moment. And uh, this one is gonna be a bit of a slow build. It's gonna take a couple of weeks, I would say, just me being realistic on this one, just because I need to do custom wiring looms in there to get receivers, video transmitters separated out on the wings. Because uh, we've got two motors, that'll need a custom wiring loop, which I do have the white parts here for. I think I've got the servers ready for this one as well. Don't have the motors, so I'll need to get those ordered uh, ASAP. Uh, flight controller, vector, no brainer to go in there. And I'm genuinely, well, I, to be honest, I'm not even sure I'll put a vector in this one just to expedite the build time uh, to get it out and uh, go and get it tested. But we'll see, watch this space. Excuse me. If you have any questions or comments about the XUAV Snow Goose or Mini Goose, you can either ask them in the comment section underneath this video or pop across to uh, Facebook, type in Rag the Nuts Off and then click the join button on the right hand side. And of course, uh, what I'll do is actually go and take some photographs of this one and post them in the group uh, later on, either this evening or first thing in the morning for you. So on that note, from myself, Matt, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this live episode uh, about the Snow Goose. Looks like it's gonna fly well. And on that note, from myself, Matt, as always, cheerios.